everyone i am going to explain what is the leukemia <clears throat> so in general term we are knowing as a blood cancer but it's in the pathology we now call it as a leukemia so what is the leukemia by definition it is a stem cell disorder characterized by the neoplastic proliferation malignant neoplastic proliferation and the accumulation of immature hematopoietic cells in the marrow so two word is the most important first one is the immature hematopoietic cells and second one is the malignant neoplastic proliferation so what are the immature cells in the bone marrow and the, how the bone marrow how the immature cells collected in the bone marrow so due to certain genetical mutation the first immature cells in the bone marrow is the blast cells from the blast there is a formation of pro myelocyte myelocyte meta myelocyte band form and finally there is a formation of neutrophil neutrophil is the most mature cells and the most immature cells is the blast cells so due to any genetical mutation if the blast cells are unable to differentiate into the neutrophils and the blast cell accumulate in the bone marrow in the percentage more than 20% we can call it is a acute leukemia and depend on the which cells accumulated we can call it as acute myeloid or acute lymphoid leukemia so in the bone marrow there is a multipotent hemopoietic stem cell first cells multipotent multipotential hemopoietic cells we can call it as a multipotent because it give rise to the many other different cells it can give rise to the myeloid cells second one is the lymphoid cells so what is the myeloid progenitor in the bone marrow from the myeloid cells there is a formation of megakaryocytes megakaryocytes is the largest cells in the bone marrow which is only present in the bone marrow the size is almost equal to 30 to 35 micron on the surface of megakaryocyte there is a formation of the platelet so there is a formation of thrombocyte thrombocyte is nothing but the platelet second one is the erythrocyte third one is the mast cells and the most important is the myeloblast okay this cell is the most immature cells which can differentiate into the mature cells like the basophils neutrophil eosinophil and finally is the monocytes if this cells accumulate in the blast more than 20% we can call it is acute leukemia so depend on the situation if the myeloid series that is the most immature cells get accumulated there is a clonal expansion of myelocytes one myelocyte can give rise to other myelo uh, myeloblast then different myeloblast so there we can call it as acute myeloid leukemia second one is a lymphoid progenitor so lymphoid progenitor can give rise to the small lymphocyte and one is the large lymphocyte small lymphocyte again divided into the b lymphocyte and the t lymphocytes and large lymphocyte is the natural killer cells that is the large lymphocytes having the cytoplasm and the nucleus small lymphocytes is equal to the rbc it's having very scanty amount of cytoplasm and which differentiate into the plasma cells on infection so if the myeloid series is accumulated we can call it is a acute myeloid leukemia that is aml if the lymphoid series lymphoid progenitor accumulated we can call it is a all that is acute lymphoblastic leukemia so depending on the situation depending upon the types of cells we can divide into the acute or myeloid or acute lymphoid leukemia if it is in the chronic condition that is the chronic myeloid or chronic lymphoid leukemia that is the different condition now what is the difference between the reactive and the leukemic cells so reactive means infection infective condition infective condition we can get reactive leukocytosis and in the leukemia we can get clonal expansion of the neoplastic cells so when we suspect the leukemia on the peripheral smear first criteria is increased number of tlc if the tlc is more than 50000 and second one is the increased immature cells remember one thing immature cells is the most important in the reactive condition 
like uh, pneumonia bacterial endocarditis anything any infection septicemia there is a increased number of tls that is a neutrophil monocyte but we cannot call it is a leukemia because it is the reactive condition there is a proliferation of mature cells that is the neutrophil and other cells to fight the condition to fight the infective organism so remember one thing you have uh, you are um, you must be able to identify the blast cells to call it is a leak leukemia and there is a very strict criteria by the who that blast cell must be more than 20 percent to call it is acute leukemia so in the reactive condition it is very important to differentiate the reactive from the uh, leukemic condition so what is the symptoms of the reactive condition symptoms from the underlying disease like if the patient is having pneumonia it can be presented as a cough cough fever uh, chest pain if the in the other condition if the patient is leukemic it generally present in the organomegaly first symptom that is multiple bone pain bony tenderness multiple enlarged lymph nodes that is the leukemic condition why there is a splenomegaly organomegaly in the leukemic patient because there is a entrap of the excessive blast cells in the hematopod hemato in the reticular endothelial cells reticular endothelial system of the spleen and the liver and second one is that there is the extra medullary hematopoiesis as a result there is an increase in uh, size of the spleen and the liver okay and why there is a bony pen tenderness because the marrow is too much proliferating in the condition of too much proliferation so um, proliferating cells stimulated the nerve inside the marrow which uh, can lead to multiple um, which can lead to the bony tenderness so come to the rbc in the reactive condition you always get normal setting normal chromic uh, in the leukemic you always sometime you get anemia sometime you get normocytic normal chromic. remember one thing rbc is not infected in the leukemic conditions the cells in the reactive condition is always mature cells so neutrophil eosinophil monocyte any condition depend upon the underlying condition but you will not get the blast cell in the reactive condition on the other hand there is a more than 20 percent blast in the immature cells immature blast cells in the leukemia count usually count normal of the treatment and the abnormally worsen with the time in the leukemic condition platelet may be normal or may be decrease in the acute leukemia but most of the time platelets are decrease in the acute leukemia now come to the <coughs> symptoms of the leukemia so the most important is the spleen and the liver statement spleen and liver status that is the, you will you will always get the splenomegaly and the organomegaly in the leukemic patients then second one is the multiple bone pain that is a bony tenderness then some systemic symptoms like a weight loss fever and infrequent infection if the platelets is reduced in the acute leukemia you will get the uh, patches on the skin like red red patches uh, easily bleed and bruising and the purpurous patches on the spot on the skin and finally is the increased multiple lymph nodes now the what is the criteria of classification we can classify the leukemia on the basis of morphology cytochemical immunophenotyping cytogenetics and molecular so what is the morphological criteria it is the morphology of the cells which look on peripheral smear and the bone marrow we can divide it some myeloid whether it is a myeloid what is this a lymphoid because every cells whether it is a myeloid or lymphoid having different morphological features so with the help of ps and bone marrow examination we can only differentiate this leukemia into the acute myeloid and acute lymphoid second one is the cytochemistry cytochemical certain chemicals are there like um, myeloperoxidase sudan black past stain MPO stain, pass stain, Sudan black, Sudan stain. So we can divide into the uh, we can divide uh, leukemia on the basis of uh, cytochemistry because MPO is always positive in the myeloid series, pass is always positive in the lymphoid series. Now final third one is the immunophenotyping, that is nothing but the flow cytometer flow cytometer so what is the uh, what is the role of flow cytometer in the leukemia so 
there is a protein called the cluster of differentiation that is the CD protein. So a myeloid series and the lymphoid series having different CD protein on their surface like 13, 33, 117 MPO all always positive in myeloid series then 2, 3, 4, 7 always positive in the lymphoid series. So different CD marker are present on the surface. With the help of flow cytometer, we are able to detect the different CD markers on the surface of the cells. Now the final is, fourth is the cytogenetics, which can detect the, the abnormality in the chromosomal, chromosomal level, like uh, BCR, ABL, that is 922 in CML patient. So that is the cytogenetical abnormality, that is 922. Now most advanced is the molecular genetics which detected the mutation at the gene level. So there is a 46 chromosome in your body, that 46 chromosome containing 20,500 genes and the mutation in genes can be detected with the help of molecular genetics. Okay, like a BCR, ABL, ALL, gene rearrangement, deletion, inversion, any mutation as a um, result into the leukemia. So that mutation can be detected with the help of molecular genetics. So this is the basics of classification, morphological, cytochemical, immunophenotypic, cytogenetics and finally is the molecular genetics. Now come to the classification. We can classify acute versus chronic whether it is myeloid versus lymphoid now two committees are there to classify leukemia FAB is the French American British and the WHO according to FAB which is based on the morphological more morely more based on the morphology the blast cell should be more than 30 percent but according to WHO which is based on cytogenetics molecular and some morphological features the blast should be more than 20% to call it is acute leukemia. Now come to the acute myeloid leukemia and the acute lymphoid leukemia classification. This is the FAB classification, French, American, British classification because WHO classification is totally different which is based on the molecular and cytogenetic study. So it is divided, myeloid is divided into the seven types and lymphoid divided into the three types. So M0 is the minimal differentiation, M1 is without maturation, M2 with maturation, M3 promyelocytic leukemia, M4 myelomon myelomonocytic, it is containing both the component, myelo means the blast and the monocytes mean the monocytic component, M5 is the purely monocytic, M6 here you will get erythroid precursor, in the all the series you will get myeloid precursor but only M6 is there in which condition you will get erythroid precursor m7 is the mm, leukemia of the megakaryoblast megakaryocytes that is the you know, cells which give rise to the multiple platelets and lymphoid series there is only three category l1 l2 and l3 depend on the morphology l1 is the small l2 is the larger and l3 is the burkitt cell type it's a very rare to, uh, leukemia now what is the difference between the myeloid and the lymphoid so on the peripheral smear and the bone marrow we are able to differentiate uh, myeloblast and the lymphoblast on to the on morphology basis because it's very important to differentiate because both the leukemia having the different treatment different age of presentation different clinical outcome different prognosis that's why it is important to differentiate the myeloblast from the lymphoblast on morphology Ultimately, flow cytometer is able to detect the difference between the CD marker of myeloid series and lymphoid series. But morphology, morphologically, it is, uh, it is uh, possible to differentiate the myeloblast from the lymphoblast. So most important is the point I am going to mention one by one. First one is the size of the myeloblast. It is the larger cells as compared to lymphoblast which is generally smaller. The cytoplasm is scanty to moderate. In the lymphoblast, you will get only very rare cytoplasm. Suppose this is the nucleus and this is the outer cytoplasm, very small cells of the lymphoblast, very small cytoplasm. The most important thing is the myeloblast, you will get multiple nucleoli and very 
कैंटी इनकॉन्सपिशियस न्यूक्लियोला इन द लिम्फो ब्लास्ट ऑलवेज थ्री टू फाइव न्यूक्लियोला रिमेंबर वन थिंग न्यूक्लियोला इज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट क्राइटेरिया टू सेल टू कॉल एनी सेल एज ए ब्लास्ट सेल्स साइज मोर देन द नॉर्मल मैच्योर सेल्स बिकॉज इट इज द अर्लीस्ट सेल्स देन प्रेजेंस ऑफ न्यूक्लियोला और रॉड इज ऑलवेज इंडिकेटिव वी आर डीलिंग विद द माइलो ब्लास्ट बिकॉज और रॉड इज नथिंग बट द कलेक्शन ऑफ द ग्रैनुल्स इन द साइटोप्लाजम ऑफ द माइलोसाइट्स माइलो ब्लास्ट माइलो ब्लास्टिक सेल्स ओके और रॉड विल नेवर यू विल नेवर गेट और रॉड इन द लिम्फॉइड सीरीज देन ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ साइटो केमिस्ट्री एज आई टोल्ड यू माइलो प्रॉक्सीडेज इज ऑलवेज पॉजिटिव सोडॉन ब्लैक इज पॉजिटिव बोथ आर पॉजिटिव इन माइलोइड सीरीज एंड बोथ आर नेगेटिव पास एंड एसिड फॉस्पेट आर नेगेटिव इन माइलोइड बट पॉजिटिव इन लिम्फो ब्लास्ट पास इज ऑलवेज पॉजिटिव इन एम टाइप एंड द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर एम फाइव दैट इज मोनोसाइटिक सीरीज इज नॉन स्पेसिफिक स्ट्रेस इज ऑलवेज पॉजिटिव इन एम फोर एंड एम फाइव बिकॉज एम फोर इज द माइलो मोनोसाइटिक एंड एम फाइव इज द ओनली प्योरली मोनोसाइटिक सर नॉन स्पेसिफिक स्ट्रेज इज पॉजिटिव इन एम फोर एम फाइव नाउ दिस द एनिमेटेड पिक्चर वट इज द माइलो ब्लास्ट एंड लिम्फो ब्लास्ट लुक एट द सेल्स सो दिस इज द ऑर रॉड्स कर रॉड शेप स्ट्रक्चर ऑन द साइटोप्लाजम ऑफ द माइलोइ सीरीज नोट द प्रोमिनेंट न्यूक्लियोला दिस सेंटर टू डॉट्स आर द न्यूक्लियोलाय इट्स द साइन ऑफ दैट सेल्स आर वेरी मैच्योर दे आर प्रोलिफरेटिंग वेरी फ्रिक्वेंटली सो दैट इज द न्यूक्लियोलाय प्रेजेंस ऑफ ऑर रॉड्स न्यूक्लियोलाय इंक्रीज इन द साइज लुक एज द साइज कंपेयर द साइज ऑफ माइलो साइट्स माइलो ब्लास्ट फ्रॉम द लिम्फो ब्लास्ट ऑन द अदर हैंड लिम्फो ब्लास्ट आर द स्मॉलर सेल्स वेरी स्कैंटी रिम ऑफ साइटोप्लाजम न्यूक्लियोला यू आर यू नॉट फ्रिक्वेंटली सी इन द न्यूक्लियोला इन द लिम्फो ब्लास्ट दैन क्रोमेटीन इज वेरी कोर्स क्रोमेटीन सो दैट इज द क्रोमेटीन सो क्रोमेटीन इज इज वेरी कोर्स दैट्स वाई यू आर नॉट एबल टू सी द मॉर्फोलॉजी ऑफ न्यूक्लियोला इट्स वेरी कोर्स क्रोमेटीन बिकॉज इट्स वेरी डार्कर इन कलर इट्स स्टेन वेरी बेसोफिलिक स्टेन इट्स अ वेरी डार्कर ब्लू कलर सो you will not you will not get the nucleola in the lymphoblast now this is the picture which showing or rods in the cytoplasm this is the blast cells okay look at the size and compare the size of the cells with that of rbc so rbc size is just 7 to 8 micron and look at the size of this cells it's almost 3 to 4 time of normal rbc and look at the prominent nucleoli the prominent nucleoli increase cells presence of or rods abnormal cells presence of granules in the cytoplasm it means you are dealing with the something abnormal on the peripheral smear so next step is the bone marrow examination now this is the lymphoblast look at the size it just double or trip, double to the size of the normal rbc very scanty amount of cytoplasm only rim of cyto- cytoplasm is present nucleoli is totally absent so increase amount of si- increase size absence of nucleoli uh, compact chromatin or coarse chromatin is the feature of lymphoblast remember one thing normal mature lymphocyte is always equal to the size of rbc it's uh, just about 7 to 8 micron but the lymphoblast on the other hand it's uh, 14 to up to the 14 to 16 micron now what are the hematological findings what the findings you will get on peripheral smear uh, anemia it's not a important you will sometime you will get normocytic normochromic rbc sometime you will get anemic patient depending on the situation and dietary dietary status of the patients so there is a thrombocytopenia leukocytosis so you will get normal or increase or decrease uh, wbc and the blast cell is always more than 20% so it is not always possible that the, you will get the high tlc in the leukemic patient because there are the two variants that is the a uh, leukemic leukemia a uh, leukemic leukemia and second one is the sub leukemic leukemia sub leukemic leukemia so what you will get in early leukemic leukemia and what you will get sub leukemic leukemia what is the meaning of early leukemic leukemia you will not get 
blast cell on the PS, but the marrow is full of blast cells. That is the a leukemic leukemia. On the other hand, in the sub leukemic leukemia, you will get two to five percent of blast. Remember one thing: there is a strict criteria of twenty percent blast. But in the sub leukemic leukemia, you will get only one to five percent of the blast in peripheral circulation. But the criteria of twenty percent is fulfilled in the bone marrow. You are if you are suspecting there is something abnormal cells. 2 to 5 percent do the bone marrow examination if the bone marrow examination the patient is having more than 20 percent blast strictly call it is acute leukemia because the, there is a um, many reason for sub leukemic leukemia patient present with the early stage or certain um, other abnormality so it is not always possible that you will get 50000 or 1 lakh count in the leukemic patient sometime you will get normal count or even as normal as the normal patient count like 5000 6000 tlc and the blast and the marrow is full of blast so always consider these two points that is bone marrow examination is important to rule out sub leukemic and a leukemic leukemia now what is the bone marrow criteria blast and the blast like cells 30% according to fab as i already told you but according to who it is the strict that is the 20% of non erythroid cells because you are you are um, study the myeloid leukemia so cells is mostly of non erythroid series that is the myeloid series that is blast pro myelocyte myelocyte meta myelocyte and band form okay now come to the one by one first one is the m0 that is the minimum differentiation So, what is the meaning of differentiation? The blast is thirty percent. I'm I'm telling you the FAV criteria. Blast more than thirty percent of non-erythroid series and the nucleated cells because RBC are non-nucleated. So, must be the myeloid series that is the uh, nucleated cells. And the most important is the less than thirty percent are positive for MPO and pseudon black. the cells are not differentiated that is the minimum differentiation you can't tell whether it is a myeloid or lymphoid leukemia on the basis of morphology and the cells are gray blue cytoplasm with the nucleoli more than one nucleoli so this is the undifferentiated leukemia look at the cells this all the cells which are showing in the pictures are the blast cells look at the size of the cells and compare with the, always compare any cell. when you are when you are uh, speaking about the size of the cells always compare the size with the background rbc there is a no other criteria to compare the size of the cells you know that the size of the cells size of the rbc is 7 to 8 microns so always compare to the size of the blast cells is with the background rbc so these are all the blast cells prominent nuclear these are the prominent nuclei in every cells look at the white dots in every cells these are nothing but the nuclei increased size absence of granules gray blue cytoplasm prominent nuclei no differentiation no mature cells no neutrophil no basophil no eosinophil no any mature cells on the peripheral smear it means you are dealing with the cells of leukemia of undifferentiation that is the m0 leukemia here you will get mpo stain only one cell stain that is the less than 3% only one cell so look at the other cell these are absolutely normal no granules in the cytoplasm and they are not stained by the mpo stain only one cells these are the cells showing the blue granules stain blue granules in the cytoplasm so only less than 3% cells stain with the mpo stain that is a myeloperoxidase myeloperoxidase generally present in the granules so it is stain that cells now come to the flow cytometer of the of the minimum differentiation first one i am to, uh, telling you the, what is the positive marker cd33 is the positive then cd34 positive chla dr positive and now cd117 is the weak positive now n- negative is the tdt mpo negative and the cd64 negative cd64 negative so 13 33 mpo these are the myeloid marker okay so you will not get 30 in the undifferentiated cells so 33 117 mpo these are positive 
and the remaining 64 CD4 CD4 CD5 these are the lymphoid marker that is so 13 33 MPO 117 it means that the cells is abnormal and the cells is myeloid series because it says positive with the CD 13 33 MPO and 117 so the first one is the AML M1 now next is the AML without maturation so what is the meaning of this maturation so the mature shell mature cell should be less than 10 percent of the non erythroid series that is the basophil neutrophil monocyte this is less than 10 percent and remaining 90 percent of the blast cells that's on that condition you will call it as a m1 that is the without maturation blast percentage is remaining same for m1 to m7 that is the 30 percent then second one is the monocytic component should always be less than 10 percent and finally is m0 in m0 the mpo stain less than 10 per 3 percent in the m1 there is a more than 3 percent positivity for myeloperoxidase or sodon black the blast in the m1 are usually larger with the variable um, nc ratio very rare blast may be demonstrated or rod so this is the picture of m1 you will only see one mature cells one mature lymphocytes and remaining all the cells are blast cells so look at the size of the cells prominent nucleoli this white spot on the cells that is nothing but the nucleoli and one mature cell occasional one mature cells so 10 percent mature less than 10 percent mature cells and remaining 90 percent are the blast cells this is a biopsy picture this all the prominent nuclei this is all the blast cells and the few mature cells on the biopsy picture so m1 is without maturation so now come to the m2 that is the with maturation what is the meaning of maturation blast criteria remain the same so mature cells should be more than 10 percent now mature cells that is the neutro lympho beso mono more than 10 percent and remaining is the blast cells the blast cells are usually larger cells with the nc ratio and here you will get few or rods in the peripheral smear so this is the picture of m2 you can see one or rod you can clearly see one or rod in the cytoplasm the cells is very granular the cytoplasm is very granular these are all the blast cells look at the prominent nucleoli high ratio and one mature cells so this is the mpo stain here you will mpo stain stain or rods so all the cells stain mpo that is the more than three percent so this is also one picture of m1 ml m2 these are the blast cells this all the blast cells and here you can see two mature or three mature neutrophils so the mature component should be more than more than 10 percent and the remaining cells is blast cells remaining cells is the blast cells so as the picture suggested you are dealing with something mature uh, leukemia that is the aml m2 now come to the flow cytometer 45 you can see two population one green and one is the red so these are in the location of the blast in the where you will get blast cells cd33 cd34 positivity both are positive cd45 cd117 both are positive then CD13 positive, HLA-DR positive, CD11 negative, then CD3 negative. So, what are the conclusion? 13, 33, 117, MPO, these are all the positive. That is the myeloid marker is positive. Now, CD3, CD3 negative, CD11 negative. That is the MPO, that is the lymph, uh, lympho. Uh, lymph lymphoblastic markers are negative so you are dealing with the aml m2 that is 13 positivity 33 positivity 117 positivity and mpo positivity now i am showing you if you are confused with the how to interpret the um, flow cytometer chart it's having four quadrant q2 q3 and the q4 if the red dots come into the q2 both vertical and horizontal marker are positive if it is come into the q3 both are negative if it is come into the q1 only vertical marker is positive 
if it is come into the q4 only horizontal marker is positive for example you will get red dots here that is q2 that is both the component are positive that cd45 cd117 positive you will get red dots here in q3 so both the component are negative mpo and cytochrome 3 are both are negative you will get red dots in q4 so only hla dr positive cd11 negative so in this way it is a very simple it's very complex to interpret the flow cytometer chart but i'm for explanation purpose i am showing this basic trick how to interpret the flow cytometer charts now come to the most advanced that is the acute promalocytic leukemia it is the only medical emergency into the leukemia because the patient always present with the dic that is the disinhibited intravascular coagulopathy special types of leukemia that is the promyelocytic leukemia so promyelocyte is the third step of maturation first one is the blast second is the promyelocyte third one is the myelocyte metamyelocyte band form in neutrophil so these are the larger cells with the high nc ratio and coarse red or purple granule this is the largest cells in the blastic series which is having cytoplasmic granules and the more or rods it's having two types that one is a hypergranular first one is a hypergranular and second one is the hypogranular hypogranular depending on the granules on the cytoplasm okay so hypogranular variant is always known as m3v v is stand for hypogranular variant so hypogranular variant the blaster buttock shape bilobe okay bilobe buttock shape and very scanty granules in the cytoplasm so the peripheral <coughs> smear you will get normocytic normochromic anemia but the promyelocytes whether it is depend on the types you will get hypergranular or hypogranular variant may demonstrate fragmented rbc if associated with the dic so it is a medical emergency why it is medical emergency because the most of the patient present with the disseminated intravascular coagulopathy what is the dic so this blast cells containing procoagulant granules in, into the cytoplasm due to these are the blast cells these are very fragile cells and due to treatment or chemo if the cells are burst in the blood in the blood it will release the procoagulant granules into the blood which ultimately result in coagulation of the flowing blood so there is a consumption coagulopathy decrease the, all the platelets coagulation factor and continuously bleeding from the all the sides of the patients so that is the medical emergency that's why always mm, a, m3 it is very important to know the morphology of the promyelocyte because mm, patient may lead into the dic immediately so bone marrow is a hypercellular and you will get prominent promyelocytes so these are the cystiocytes these are the fragmented rbc if you are getting cystiocytes in aml m3 patient it indicate that the patient in the dic state and it's a medical emergency so these are the promyelocytes look at the cells the size and these are this, these are the collection of the rods these are called phagot cells multiple or rods in the cytoplasm here you will get one thick or rod in the cytoplasm and note the granules in the cytoplasm multiple granules in the cytoplasm size more than 20 micron presence of multiple or rods prominent nucleoli it means you are dealing with aml m3 the morphology is very important it's the only leukemia which is diagnosed by the morphologically it's very easy to diagnose aml m3 and it's a medical emergency only leukemia present is a medical emergency so look at the mpo stain it stain all the cytoplasmic granules the cytoplasmic granule obscured too much obscured the nuclear feature also so all the stain all the cytoplasmic granules are positive with the mpo now come to the flow cytometer what are the positive marker so on 45 45 is the indicator of blast you will only see one cell population it means that is the blast and that blast belongs to only one population 
दैट इज एम पी ओ पॉजिटिविटी फर्स्ट वन इज एम पी ओ पॉजिटिव सी डी थर्टी थ्री पॉजिटिव दैन सी डी थर्टीन स्लाइटली वीक पॉजिटिव एंड द नेगेटिव फॉर सी डी ट्वेंटी सी डी टेन टी डी टी एंड सी डी फोर्टीन इट मीन्स द एम पी ओ पॉजिटिविटी थर्टीन एंड थर्टी थ्री पॉजिटिविटी इट मीन्स यू आर डीलिंग विद इट मीन्स यू आर डीलिंग विद द माइलोइड ब्लास्ट एंड दैट इज ओनली वन पॉपुलेशन इट मीन्स इंडिकेट दैट यू आर डीलिंग विद द प्रो माइलोसाइड्स सी डी वन वन सेवन इज द डीम पॉजिटिविटी सो कम टू द नेक्स्ट वेरियंट दैट इज द हाइपो ग्रैनुलर वेरियंट सो वट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन हाइपर एंड हाइपो ग्रैनुलर वेरियंट सो टी एल सी इन द केस ऑफ हाइपो ग्रैनुलर वेरियंट इज ऑलवेज हाई ओके मैरो इज यूजली हाइपर सेल्युलर एंड ब्लास्ट इज लेस दैन ट्वेंटी परसेंट बट यू विल गेट अ टिपिकल प्रो माइलोसाइड टिपिकल इज नॉर्मल प्रोलोसाइड अ टिपिकल मीन्स बटक शेप बायलो सो सी द मॉर्फोलॉजी ऑफ अ टिपिकल दैट इज द बायलो बायलो न्यूक्लियर दिस वन इज अ बायोब दिस वन इज अ बायोब दिस वन इज अ बायोब एंड एबसेंस ऑफ साइटोप्लाज्मिक ग्रैनुअल्स एबसेंस ऑफ ऑर रॉड्स so you are dealing with something abnormal which is m3v that is the hypo hypo granular variant of promyelocytes now come to the m4 which is a combination of two myeloblast and monocytes that is the myelo monocytic leukemia blast percentage remain the same and the most important is the monocytic component because you are dealing with the monocyte monocyte is a uh, component of myelo monocyte so monocyte percentage should be more than 20 okay mature component more than 20 peripheral blood smear show fine to tendency to 9 which is confirmed by the cytochemistry cytochemistry it is a nse non specific stress which is positive for monocytic series then monocyte what is the, how monocyte look on the peripheral smear monocytes are uh, round nuclei with the less chromatin with the more than one nucleoli okay and the pro monocytes are the convoluted nuclei so if this is the cells you will get this types of nuclei so convoluted nuclei with the vacuolar or granular cytoplasm so m2 and m4 it's very uh, it's it's very difficult to differentiate or the criteria is very strict monocytic criteria because on the peripheral smear on the bone marrow peripheral smear you will get 5 to 10 to 9 which is confirmed by cytochemistry and in the bone marrow you will get more than 20% of monocytic component okay this is the aml m4 this one is the normal blast and this one is the monocytes monoblast okay so the black arrow indicating blast normal blast cells and the red arrow indicating the monocytic component look at the cells it is the somehow kidney in shape okay granular cyto uh, a granular cytoplasm and some cytoplasmic vacuoles and the blast cells are presence of prominent nuclei abundant cytoplasm and the larger cells and this are the mature cells okay these are the mature lymphocytes you will get one metamyelocytes okay now come to the cytochemistry aml m4 is the dual stress positivity these are the positive myelocytic component and the blast cells are negative for steres so the flow cytometer in the flow cytometer you will get two population one is the blue one is the red blue for the blast cells and red for the monocytic component so first is the what is the monocytic uh, monocytic marker for the marker in the flow cytometer that is the cd14 and the cd64 okay so the red component is positive for cd14 and the cd 64 that uh, that means you are dealing with the monocytic component now come to the blastic component it is mpo positivity first mpo positivity second one is the cd13 hladr positivity cd117 so 13 117 hladr it means you are dealing with the myeloblast and second one is a 14 and 64 positivity it means you are dealing with the monocytes so if you are on the morphology if you are suspecting that is it is having two component one is the myeloblast second one is the monocyte so always prefer two cd markers mixed cd marker one for monocytic component that is the 14 and 64 and third second one is the 
माइलोब्लास्टिक कंपोनेंट जैसे थर्टीन थर्टी थ्री वन वन सेवन एच एल ए डी आर टी डी टी ऑल दिस थिंग ओके नाउ कम टू द एम एल एम फाइव दैट इज प्योरली मोनोसैटिक ल्यूकेमिया इफ द ब्लास्ट मोर देन एटी परसेंट वी कैन कॉल इट इज अ माइल मोनोब्लास्टिक इफ इट इज लेस देन एटी परसेंट विट इज कॉल इज अ मोनोसाइटिक इट्स लुक लाइक मोनोसाइट्स बट इट्स इट्स अ एम फाइव बी दैट इज द मोनोसाइटिक ब्लास्ट इज लेस देन एटी परसेंट इफ इट इज मोर देन एटी परसेंट इट इज कॉल मोनोब्लास्टिक सो ब्लास्ट क्राइटेरिया रिमेन द सेम मोर देन थर्टी परसेंट एंड द मैच्योर कंपोनेंट हियर द मैच्योर मोनोसाइटिक कंपोनेंट इज मोर देन एटी परसेंट रिमेंबर वन थिंग ओनली सेल्स इन द पेरीफेरल सर्कुलेशन इज द मोनोसाइट्स मोर देन एट्टी परसेंट रिमेनिंग ट्वेंटी परसेंट इज द न्यूट्रोफिल बेसोफिल एंड योसेनोफिल सो दिस इज द मोनोसाइट्स ओके प्रोमिनेंट न्यूक्लियर लैम साइटोप्लाज्मिक ग्रैनुअल्स आर नो साइटोप्लाज्मिक ग्रैनुअल्स इरेगुलर न्यूक्लियर मार्जिन एंड लार्जर सेल्स एंड लुक एट ऑन बोन मैरोस्मियर दिस आर द ओनली मैच्योर सेल्स एंड रिमेनिंग आर द मोनोब्लास्ट सो द मार्कर एज ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू दैट पॉजिटिव फॉर सी डी फोर्टीन एंड सी डी सिक्सटी फोर बहुत पॉजिटिव फॉर सी डी फोर्टीन एंड सिक्सटी फोर ओके इट इज ऑलवेज पॉजिटिव फॉर एन ए सी दैट इज अ नॉन स्पेसिफिक स्टोरेज नाउ कम टू द ए एम एल एम सिक्स एम सिक्स एज आई ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू इट्स इरेथ्रो इरेथ्रो ल्यूकेमिया इट मीन्स यू विल गेट द इरेथ्रॉइट ब्लास्ट सेल्स इन द पेरीफेरल सर्कुलेशन and second population of the blast cell it's almost equal to myelomonocytic that is two component my, myeloblast and monocytes uh, here in the place of monocyte you will get erythroblast so what is the percentage of erythroblast is more than 50% and the blast cell is more than 20% blast may be m1 m2 m4 or m5 but the erythroblast is uh, most important and most common is you will get trilineage dysplasia trilineage means all the three that is the megakaryocytes myeloid and erythroid series that is a dysplastic cell it means irregular cells erythroid precursors show feature like nuclear cytoplasmic asynchronous lobulation then binuclearity i will show you the picture you can clear now aml m6b it is the second type here you will get erythroblast more than 80% on the pure erythroblast it is more than 50% with the blast cell more than 20% if erythroblast is more than 80% it's come into the m6b type okay so look at the picture these are the erythroblast look at the cytoplasm is completely bluish cytoplasm okay bluish cytoplasm with the open chromatin this cells in the bone marrow are the erythroblast cells these are the late nucleo late normal blast okay these are the intermediate or early early intermediate and early normal blast and this cells are the blast cells erythroblast cells so the blast cells is more than 50% erythroblast and the blast cells is 20% so you are dealing with erythroblastic leukemia look at the cytoplasm it completely bluish cytoplasm at compared to the myeloblast here in which so aml m6 is positive for both mpo and the pas mpo for the this is the mpo positive cells it's look the blackish or bluish cytoplasmic granules and that is the pas cells positive remember one thing past is only positive in the lymphoblast and aml m6 and the, all the myeloid series are negative for the past in now final is the aml m7 that is the mega karyocytic leukemia the criteria for the blast is same but the blast cell should be of mega karyoblast okay it's very difficult to differentiate mega karyoblast from the myeloblast so the most important is you must have ultra structural examination facility and ultra structural cytochemistry to call it as a blast cells because it's look on looks like myeloblast and peripheral circulation so you will get on ps micro mega karyocyte fragmentation of the micro micro mega karyocyte blast may be show vacuolations okay and there some dysplastic large platelets because the uh, platelets is derived from the mega karyocytes 
bone marrow you will get mature dysplastic megakaryocytes so this is the blast cells it look like uh, myeloblast on peripheral circulation it must must be positive for glycoprotein second b third a that is the platelet glycoprotein yeah, so you must have the ultrastructural examination facility in your lab to call it the megakaryoblast okay and the megakaryoblast the blast is positive 33 45 that is the blast and the cytochrome 61 is the marker for megakaryocytes 61 42 both are positive that is the you are dealing with the micro uh, aml m7 micro megakaryocytes so here i am going with in general what is the clinical features of the leukemic patients so for revision purpose abrupt onset anemia decrease hb neutropenia thrombocytopenia decrease platelet organomegaly bony tenderness and sinus involvement in the case of leukemic uh, lymphoblastic that is all okay the lab finding is the ps you will get normocytic normochromic anemia but the tlc is normal increase or decrease you will get all the three conditions as i uh, explained earlier in the case of subleukemic or leukemic leukemia platelet is always decrease in acute leukemia bone marrow is always hypercellular and more than 30 percent blast according to fab classification Thank you.